Hey there, welcome back to STM32 Coding for Everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can set up your STM32 microcontroller to run multiple channel of ADC conversion, basically in direct memory access. Now, in the previous tutorial, we saw how you can run a single DMA conversion channel. Basically, we had a potentiometer connected to PA0 where we basically do some basic configuration and we could see that we were able to access the ADC conversion value straight from the memory. Right now, in this tutorial, we're adding another channel and that channel is going to be an LDR, a light dependent resistor. Now, as you can see, I've got it probed right now with my multimeter and the reading is almost three kilo ohm resistor right so this is dependent on the light falling on it that is why the value here is not a constant it is basically changing so if i try to close this ldr which is a very sensitive component you can see that there is a very huge jump in the resistance reading there as you can see it's going to 50 kilo ohm now these can go up to mega ohm depending on how dark you can set this ldr it is very sensitive a slight change in the light level basically you can see a very very significant decrease in the resistance value great so what i'm going to do here disconnect this okay and we need to connect it between 3.3 volt and pa1 since we already have uh, the potentiometer connected to PA0 as per our previous tutorial and we need to set up a voltage divider resistor with the LDR that must be connected to ground. I've got already a 1.7 kilo ohm approximately resistance that is connected to my LDR basically to form that voltage divider to go into the circuit if you're going to set up uh, an ldr or a thermistor or whatever sensor you've got onto your nuclear board and you intend to use the same power supply obviously you need to provide or you need to avoid loading that particular power supply right so we're going to use a 3.3 volt here so basically we've got 3.3 volt and we've got our ldr connected like this okay then we've got the light that must be falling on it this way. And we set up a resistor here and we've got a ground point. Now, the reason for this resistor, obviously, so that we can tap here to get our connection. So this is point two for our connection. If we don't have that resistor, you basically can't be re uh, measuring across basically ground. You're not going to get anything. You have to have this resistor now. One of the other reasons to have this resistor is for also for protection. Now, if you got too much light, right, falling on this LDR, the resistance here might go to near zero, right? It won't be zero, but it might go near zero, depending on how much saturation you can get here. Then that might short it to ground and basically short this 3.3 volt array. That is why this resistor the 1.7 kilo ohm will prevent you from shorting it if this go into uh, saturation. So that is one of the two reasons why you have to set up this voltage divider network for the measurement and also for protection. So now, as per our circuit here, point one is going here and point two is going to PA1. And point three is going to grind. So that basically my connection. So let me power down my circuit so I can connect it onto my circuit. Great. So my LDR is connected, as you can see, and the resistor is also there. Now I can go ahead and start uh, configuring my direct memory access so that I can access both channel and display it on the LCD display. So if you've got your LDR and your resistor connected and you've also got a potentiometer or whatever other sensor you've got connected to your nuclear board, let's go ahead and configure our nuclear board to perform that multi-channel DMA conversion. So now 
If you've watched the previous tutorial, which is tutorial 11 on Syntec channel on the series of STM32 coding for everyone. So on that tutorial, we basically set up a single channel DMA. What I've done is I've made a copy of that tutorial and everything here is exactly the same as on that tutorial. That is why we displaying the potentiometer value there. So I'm going to go into the IOC interface. Then we need to just do one or two settings to enable us to do the multi-channel ADC conversion using the direct access memory. So the first thing is to add another channel, right? So we need to add PA1. So basically just uh, click on the drop down and single ended and we should have our channel enabled there on PA1. Next thing is to basically enable the scan mode okay but before we do that we need to increase the number of conversions since we now have two channels so we need to do two conversions so we're going to increase there by one so now we've got two channel basically two conversions and that's going to pop up another settings here basically the number of channel are going to be added so we now got two channel ranks here okay now before we discuss the channel ranks Let's go back up here so that we can see that enable scan mode is basically enabled. We can go ahead and disable the continuous conversion mode. We can disable that and have the DMA continuous request enabled and the scan mode. Okay, it is on 12-bit ADC. No problem. You can change that to a lower resolution. That is up to you. Depending on the microcontroller you are using, but it doesn't matter. So long as you keep the standard setting, you're going to have the conversion uh, accomplished. Now we come to the ranks here. Now, because we've got two channels, okay, so we need to now change rank one, channel one, and rank two must now go to channel two as well. Now the sampling time, you can change it or you can leave it uh, as is or have different sampling time, depending on what you are doing maybe the LDR here is on channel two. Maybe we want to have uh, increase a number of samples so we can basically increase the accuracy and so forth. Great. So this is basically all we need to do here. And on the DMA settings, right, we are having a half word and word. Now, this is really, uh, we can increase it to a word, 32 bit integer, just to satisfy everybody. And we can then go ahead and basically generate our code here. Uh, let me just make sure that everything is as we want it to be. Okay, great. Now I'm going to generate the code. The code generation is completed. Now before we can uh, start uh, affecting uh, important changes on our base code let's have a look at the initialization the adc initialization function right so here we can basically just confirm that we're in 12 bit mode the scan mode is enabled and we've got the dma continuous request also enabled and down here we can see that we've got channel one and channel two and also the numbers of basically conversion is also two somewhere here okay and if you want to change the sample rate, you can also change it over here for each one of these two channels. Okay, so now the first thing to do here is I'm going to make a duplicate of the LCD code here to display both the potentiometer and the LDR value. So I'll make a duplicate like that. So this here is going to be the port value. So that's a port value. And down here is going to be the L dr value and i want to be on the second line on this one so i'm going to change it to two now the sensor value is going to change now let's take a look at the variable that we defined on the previous tutorial so that's the variable that was holding for the single channel so i'm going to basically just comment this out because now we're going to be accessing things from the buffer here so i'm going to increase the buffer size to two Okay, it's an integer, but we are casting it to a 32-bit integer here, so there's no problem. Now here, the get value function, we don't need it anymore because we're going to be accessing it already from the buffer array day. So what I'm going to do also here to increase the size of the buffer from the 
start uh, ADC start DMA function. Okay, as we know that once the conversion is completed, this uh, function is going to store the value of all the ADC from different channel into the memory. So we can access it from accessing the array variables there. The next thing to do here is to obviously also pass the size of the buffer here to two. And what else, what else? Okay, then we need to change these variable here from sensor valve to actually buffer with the appropriate uh, size of the buffer or the placeholder of the buffer. Okay, so that's going to be zero. And here is going to be one. Okay, because PA1, that is where the LDR is connected. But now these sensor valve here, that's the management of the LCD display as the value changes from the higher to a lower value. So what I'm going to do is to basically just copy that way and paste it this way. Okay, now actually before we build this uh, project, let me just make another copy here because the changes that I've just made is to basically take care of the port value. Now I need to also handle the LDR value that will be displayed on the second or third row of my LCD display. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, right? And just paste it uh, down here and make the necessary changes. So the changes I'm going to make is just to change the array uh, placeholder to one there to access my buffer variable for the LDR value and also to change the rows in which I'm going to be on the LDR. So that's going to be number two here and number two here as well. I'm sure this is all I need in order to take care of the LDR on the LCD display. Great, so if everything is set here, I can now go ahead and build this piece of code, right? and the ball should be successful and we will be ready to go to basically load this into our nuclear board the build is successful great that's what we want to see okay so now uh what i'm going to do here is to basically run this in debug mode that way we going to actually also access the value in the debug window at the same time we're going to display it on the lcd now so i'm going to run this in debug mode there we go it's going to build one more time before we actually access the debug mode there we go the debugger is launching connection great we need to switch okay what is the next option here great okay so we basically almost in debug mode here and our sensor the buffer variable is basically uh empty here so what we need to do here is to basically run so right now we are basically stuck here to welcome to simtech channel by the way if you find this tutorial useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel so i'm going to go ahead and hit run and we should reset the count up to five and we enter as you can see we've got the port value and we've got the ldr value and over here you can see it's the same thing that is actually being displayed here now when i swing my potentiometer you can see that the potentiometer uh, value is basically changing we can go all the way to zero right let's stop it right there at 100 something there then we've got the LDR value that is basically almost constant because the light level is not changing, right? So now if I try to bring in some shade here, okay, you can see that the value is decreasing. The LDR value is decreasing. I'm not sure how low we can go here. This LDR is very sensitive, right? So you, you, in order for you to make it zero, you must really make it very dark. Even covering with my finger here does not uh, uh, achieve that. So you really have to put it in a very dark spot, then you can get it to zero. Now, 
if you want to maybe run a project to do some light measurement outside or something you or in a room somewhere you first need to calibrate this now let's say if i put this uh this close and this is maybe let's say i calibrate it to 50 lux then i want to display 50 lux there and if i remove it it's 1500 and i say maybe it's a thousand lux per calibration then i want to display thousand lux that way you've got your calibration set you set up the value you you run uh basically a code that will do some filtering basically you can run a code that can set some filters and things like that to stabilize your values and that way you can set up your stm32 nucleo with an ldr somewhere to basically record the light level as the sunset and sunrise and have that verify against the calibration so that's basically it guys have you can run stm32 adc dma in multiple channel mode so if you find this tutorial useful and you like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel if you have any comment make sure you drop your inquiry in the in the comment section below i will attend to it as soon as possible thank you so much for watching until next time stay tuned for more upcoming tutorial on stm32 microcontroller until next time cheers